and here we are with another Cardinals Nest. This is the show where we talk St. Mary's University Athletics. I'm Dean Beckman, the faculty athletics representative for the Cardinals. My co-host, as always, is Donnie Netto, our sports information director. Donnie, a little bit later on in the show during the interview segment, we have Jack Hurley from the men's soccer team. Uh, he was um, a feature at our athletics award ceremony earlier this year, and I'll tell you, he has picked up where he left off Absolutely. last year. So. Absolutely, and, and that was a well-deserved honor. It was a, uh, he won the uh, uh, video of the year or, or play of the year, and, and uh, it was an awesome goal last year. And, and like you said, he's picked up right where he left off, and it's going to be fun to have him on and talk a little bit about the, about the men's soccer program, and maybe we can get a little dirt on Coach Bowers. I'm not quite sure what Jack will give up, but uh, but hopefully it'll give us a, a little tidbit or two. Yeah, we are coming to you from the Jerry and Pat Pappenfuss Multimedia Lab in Aquinas Hall here on the campus of St. Mary's University in Winona. Our producer is A.J. Ruskowski. Glad that you could join us for the Cardinals Nest. And Donnie, we're going to start off kind of recapping this past week in St. Mary's sports and we'll start off with volleyball. A couple of 3-0 losses, but they went up against a couple of buzz saws. Yeah, really and good you teams. know, I talked to I caught talked to coach Zitzo after uh, after the match on Saturday and you know, she's got to be patient and that's what and she admits that, you know, she has high expectations for this team, but as we've talked and I you know, it's it's not an excuse, but it's a learning curve for everybody and and so uh, you know, you you're right, they ran into two very tough teams in St. Scholastica and St. Kate's and and uh, weren't able to get the results that they wanted, but there was a lot of good volleyball in there, and, and uh, you know we're gonna we're gonna continually talk about uh, Kira McNally and and, and Abby Stigler uh, offensively have have been outstanding. Uh, Kira's already got 270 kills on the year, which is which is uh, uh, you know outstanding. So uh, you know we're looking for big things from her, and and uh, Mandy Schmidt and Larkin Clem continue to to uh, to be amazing in the setter position and kind of run that offense and. And uh, Peyton Berg has is, is been the, the digs leader. And so, uh, you know, it's, it's, it, there's names there that we're not used to. There's names there that we are used to. And that's kind of the, the you know, the way the season is going to go is, is, that, is that meshing of, uh, of the older returners and the, and the younger freshmen. And, and several of those freshmen are getting a little baptism by fire. And welcome to the MIEC in that uh, it's, a, it's a tough conference. And, and every match is, uh, is one that can, can go either way. And so uh, right now they've got to figure out a way to get that, uh, you know, get that good play to be a little more continuous. Against St. Kate's especially, uh, they ran into a team where they, the, the, the Wildcats got on a little bit of a run in each set. And, uh, and once they did that, the Cardinals were playing from behind and just could never recover and, and, and get back into, uh, you know, get back into their form. And, and that's something that they've got to, uh, you know, I, I, mentioned, I mentioned that to Coach Zitzo. I said, you know, you guys got to stay away from their runs. And she starts laughing and she says, you're preaching to the choir here. So, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, a, it's an obvious, uh, you know, I, I find the obvious, I guess. But uh, it's something that they've got to, they've got to correct and, and, and be able to get on some of those runs themselves and, and, and maybe, uh, you know, get on a, a little bit of a roll. And, and, and hopefully it'll happen this week. Right, and you and I were both at that St. Kate's matchup, and you're exactly right. It was a runs thing, um, but as you said earlier, in between those runs, they're playing some really good volleyball. There were some great volleys in that matchup, some great plays. They just didn't seem to end in points for right. the Cardinals. Right. It was just, you know, um, again, St. <laughs> Kate's, you have to tip your cap to them, right? They played outstanding. Um, they've got to figure out, you know, they've got to figure out a way to put the ball away. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing is, is Several other rallies that they had against St. Kate's, um, we can talk about that one because both you and I saw it, but, uh, you know, they were very long. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. and any time you have a long rally, now all of a sudden it can go either way. You need, to, you need to, if you're on the receiving end, you need to get a good pass, a good set, and then put the ball away. And, and you know, when, when it's, when it's uh, you know, a, a minute-long rally, then you run into problems, and, and then a mistake can, can really cost you, and that's how those runs start. Right, and if it doesn't go your way, those long volleys, it can be demoralizing when it happens too many Absolutely. times, right? Absolutely. Um, the other thing I think I've noticed recently is that Coach Zitzo is really starting to expand the rotation a little bit. We saw in that third set 
against St. Kate's. Uh, she brought in some players that typically don't see a ton of time. So yeah. I like that strategy, right? Because, you know, being it's, it's such a young team, you have to find out what you have and, and what lineups are going to work. Absolutely. And, and you know, she's got she's to see what they can do in, in uh, you know, a, a match setting. It's, it's easy at practice to look at them and say, okay, you're looking good. But, you know, you get another opponent on the op opposite side of the net and all of a sudden, uh, you know, you've got you've to see what you have. And uh, you know, it's it's one of those things that you hope that you're able to do that in some of these tournaments that you're in, so that when you get to to the MIC portion of your schedule, that you know what you have. But uh, you know, it's going to take a little longer with this group just because of all the newness from the coach to the players, and uh, it's going to take yeah. time. Uh, now, this is a bit of a self-serving comment, but I have both in class, so. Uh, I would be remiss if I didn't point out the freshman play of Brenna Bruckert and Abby Stigler because yeah, they, they've gotten a lot of playing time and they've capitalized on it. You bet, and that's and that's what they're going to need. You know, Abby, and we've talked about her. I, I swear, every time we've had a, a show, we've talked about Abby, and and now I've just found something out today is she's a softball player as well. So okay. we're going to talk about her in the spring <laughs> as well. So uh, she's a she's one busy volleyball softball player. Yep, absolutely. Let's uh, switch things over now, Donnie, and get to women's soccer. Uh, they're coming off of a 2-1 to one win over Concordia, both the men. We'll talk to Jack later. And the women's teams made that long trek to Concordia, and uh, the women came away with that 2-1 to one victory, which which was good. They had trouble scoring up to that point, so it was good to get those two Yeah, goals. it was, and, and you know, it's one of those things, and, and we have to ask Jack because he, he experiences it, but it's tough to go to Concordia, just mm -hmm. like it's tough for Concordia to come here. It's a long trip, and uh, you know it's it's just it, it's just that whole longness, and I'm sure that the bus ride home was a lot more fun than <laughs> than the drive uh, the drive up there. But a big big win for the for the the women's team and uh, two one win. Hattie Falkman had both goals, which was which was awesome to see. And Lauren Ash had an assist on both of them. So those two were really a one two punch that uh, that Concordia couldn't handle. And I think the thing with that win. You know, when we talked to Coach Rizzo, um, you know, it, it was like, you know, we need to we need to be able to overcome adversity. Well, you look at that game, we score, and Concordia comes right back and scores two minutes later. So it goes from zero zero to us up one zero, and in the you know in the span of two minutes, now Concordia scores, it's back to one one, it's back to a tie game. Rather than be discouraged or or down, five minutes or ten minutes later, they they get the game winner from Hattie and and leave uh, leave the field with a two one win and and. It's, it's those kinds of things that are going to be the determining factor between whether you're a playoff team or, or, or not. And, you know, it's, it's uh, the, the, the women's team, you know, we talked to Coach Rizzo about it. They set up their schedule much more difficult than that team has had in the past. Mm -hmm. And I think early on people were going, oh, boy, this team's not very good. Well, mm -hmm. now, right now they're 2-2-1 two, two and one in the conference, and, and they're, uh, you know, they're battling for a conference playoff spot. And, and Really, they have a, the, the schedule is favoring them now. The, most of the teams that they have to play, aside from this weekend against Gustavus, or Augsburg, but most of the teams that they still have left are teams that are below them in the standings. So if they can take care of business, uh, a second MIC playoff uh, berth is, is right there for the taking. They've got to make sure that they take care of business. Yeah, and they're 4-4-1 four, four and one overall. And one thing we did not talk about last week with Coach Rizzo is losing Jordan Matthews, one of the best offensive players in the conference. Um, it, it's going to take some time Absolutely. <laughs> to, to, to get that offense going right. again. And, so. and you know, I, it's good to see Hattie step up because I think that even at the beginning of the year, it was a, it was a person who had a great year last year and was expected to kind of pick up for, mm -hmm. for Jordan. But I think what people are discovering is you can't just pick up for Jordan. Right. It was, right. I mean, she is a phenomenal player. And I think what really helped set Jordan apart as she was so tall. Mm -hmm. And so and so you were able to get goals in the box from headers or, you know, just the fact that it was harder to guard her because she was so tall and 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 became a, a, a threat in the air. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you know, they don't have that 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 tall person this year. And I think they need people like Hattie to to step up and, and really kind of just fill that offensive void and, and get some scoring from some other people. It's, um, you know, Brooklyn McKinney has done a great job. Lawrence Karupa has done a phenomenal job of, of kind of filling that void that Jordan left. But uh, I think they're going to still need more people to be able to, to, to fill that, that role as a, as a scorer. They can't now rely on just Hattie or just Brooklyn or just Lauren to, to do the goal scoring. It's got to be a team effort. Yep. 
So let's take a look at this upcoming week's schedule, and it's going to kick off Wednesday, Donnie, with the soccer doubleheader. No, Wednesday we've got uh, we've got volleyball at Luther, yep. and then we've got women's soccer has got a uh, non-conference game against Stout. So oh, I thought it'll we be had a, a doubleheader. It'll be a busy uh, a busy Wednesday, and then Friday the volleyball team goes to uh, they they go to Hamlin on Friday, and then now you want to talk about a busy day. We'll talk about Saturday because we have a home triple header on that Saturday. That might have been the one I was That's thinking right. about. <laughs> We've got uh, both men's and women's soccer are home against Augsburg. Uh, 1 o'clock for the women and then 3.30 for the men. And then uh, the, the women's volleyball team will cap off the day with a 7 o'clock match against Carleton. So very busy day for, for me and my workers. But it's really going to be fun to have all three teams at home the same day and not have them overlap. Usually what happens is that volleyball would play a 3 o'clock match. And, uh, and they would overlap. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to have them playing at 7 o'clock that night. Yep. All right, and with <coughs> that, we welcome in Jack Hurley from the men's soccer team. Jack, thanks so much for being here on the Cardinals' Nest. And uh, you're coming off that long bus trip to yeah. uh, Concordia, <laughs> right? And, and that one, you come away with a 0-0 tie. But just maybe talk about the difficulty of playing at Concordia because over the years as our faculty athletics rep it's something that I hear students talk about a lot. Um, it's a long ways to go and uh, so maybe just mention the, the the toll that that takes maybe physically and mentally a little bit. Yeah thanks for having me first yeah. off mm -hmm. um, and yeah six and a half hours in a bus isn't the best thing to come <laughs> off of. Luckily we're able to go up uh, the day before but that field is very tough to play on if you've ever seen it on film or in person. It's a rough grass with kind of all over the place on the field. Got some bumps and bruises across it, and then the rain came down the second half hour game, so it turned into a little bit of a mudslide <laughs> out there. You got it all. <laughs> but yeah, I think um, just the field itself and the drive provide for some interesting gameplay on there. Yeah, good. Jack, talk a little bit about, um, you know, you mentioned that it's a grass field up there, and, and, and I don't know if people really understand the difference between playing on our turf and then playing on a grass field because it's a completely different one approach to the game because the game is so much different but just talk a little bit about playing on turf and playing on grass yeah and even like turf to turf can vary our turf versus Olaf's turf which we'll see next week is very two very different playing fields um, but the switch to grass is the ball will bounce a totally different way so our game plan changed from that first second half we end up having to go a lot more big than we would have liked just because of the rain and everything was going all over the place where you can't risk turnovers in your own defensive third. Um, so yeah, I would say, but then you also look at the benefit of a lot of home games this year is that we know our turf and we know the speed of play on our turf and it's hard for other teams to come play here as well. Mm -hmm. Jack, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from. I know you're a junior here at St. Mary's, health humanities major, right? So mm -hmm. uh, tell us where you're from and uh, kind of your, your path in getting here. Yeah, so I'm from uh, Homewood, Illinois, so south suburb of Chicago, if you're familiar with that area. And uh, St. Mary's just kind of came across me when I was looking at schools. Uh, got in touch with Corbin pretty early um, in that like research process of colleges and yeah ended up here at St. Mary's health humanities major social minor and yeah loved it so far. Excellent. What do you think you want to do with that in the future any idea yet or are you going to worry about that in, in a year or two? Yeah I keep, keep <laughs> switching out worrying about it but I think some sort of counseling or something like that but yeah it changes every day. Yeah, so. good. Yeah. Jack talk a little bit about the recruiting process as a, as a player you know we've talked to we've talked to coaches about about the process they go through, but talk a little bit about while you're in high school, you're getting recruited. What's that process like? How does it start? How does it? How do you come in? And then how do you make that final decision on where to go? It's a lot of uh, building up your own film. So you gotta get your games filmed, whether it's from an independent um, worker or from. For me, it was my parents coming to games and filming. So <laughs> appreciate them for doing that. And then it's about getting in touch with coaches, so doing a lot of club tournaments that are showcases, normally out of state at these big places. I think I saw Corbin at a showcase in Illinois where he first introduced himself, and then from there it's just keeping in contact with coaches, emailing, texting back and forth, and then they kind of leave it up to you um, to make the decision there. And what was the deciding factor to, to, to come here? I think it was a good spot for me um, education-wise and soccer-wise. I always knew I wanted to do D3. I had three siblings that played D3 before me, so um, I really liked the mix of school and soccer. Uh, but St. Mary's just had 
the best vibe for me when I came and visited. A really good relationship with Corbin. He told me to pick the spot that best suits me. And I, that meant a lot and I ended up here. You know, Donnie, I can't help but think about how recruiting for the coaches has changed oh, yeah. significantly over the years, right? It used to have to be a lot of you know, traveling to games, in-person visits, phone calls. Mm -hmm. Now, um, you know, there's the showcase events, there's the texting. You can have a video page if you want, right, where you can showcase some highlights. Does that put any more of a, I don't know, pressure or perhaps onus on the player to make sure you, you do those things so that you have the same opportunities as others might? Yeah, I think it does, but in a good way. Like, you're able to build more film like coaches can only see you play a few games a year maybe especially college coaches like Corbin only saw me play twice in person so it's my job to film my club film my high school games and get them in touch and that way he can see my full style of play and not just mm -hmm. one or two games well and I think that uh, you know as, as Dean noted in in terms of you know the recruitment but uh, even for you as a, as a player your high school kind of changes in that because you've mentioned it a couple times now you play high school but you also play club so it's it's almost a year-round season for you when you come to st mary's you've got your fall and then in the winter obviously we can't play outdoors i know you guys do a lot of indoor stuff but then you get that time in the spring how important is that time in the spring that you get those practices to uh to kind of be together as a team organized uh with corbin very important and yeah that last part you noted on team culture is a big thing in the spring how do you because you're not playing for games so you don't have something to look forward to on a wednesday or a saturday each week so you have to find a way to stay focused get people to grind it out and that's when you come together and like we've only been playing with these freshmen for so many months right now because they just came in for preseason so that spring is where you build those relationships and build that team chemistry uh, Jack, congratulations. You won, not only were you nominated la for last year's Play of the Year, you won uh, for that category at our uh, recent Fall Athletics Awards ceremony. Um, tell us uh, what you thought when your name was announced as the winner and then kind of walk us through that play. Yeah, I was super honored just to be in the conversation. And when I was the winner, I was like, oh, guess I got to figure out something to say here. <laughs> everyone, so. Yeah. Kind of went off the dome with that one. Um, but yeah, that play was is against Edgewood. We were down 1-0 at the start of that game. And uh, you throw in to RJ's feet. He played it up back to Anderson and back to RJ. And then RJ swung it across to me. I was able to take a touch with my left and then looked up at the keeper and had a free shot open from like 25, 30 yards out. So took it and struck it well with my yeah. left foot and caught it in the top corner. And you've picked up right where you left off, as we mentioned in the, in the first part. And I have to ask, when uh, Eli Szymanski graduated, did he just give you the crown as the PK King, or, or did you have to <laughs> wrestle that away from him? I tried taking it while he was still there, and he, <laughs> he kept it from me, he kept making them, so I had to take it once he was gone. Jack, as, as, as we joke, Jack, you have three goals, all three of them have been PKs, and, and uh, you know, that's, that's something, I mean, you look at, you look at, people think that that's so easy. And, and this is going to be a two-part comment, but the first part is, please tell me that it's not easy. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> and then, you know, it's, it's on, the, on the flip side, we've been very successful at it. In the 0-0 tie against Concordia, Daniel comes up with a huge save on a PK that keeps it at 0-0. So, I mean, you know, you, you guys have really experienced kind of the both ends of the, of the success of a PK in that you've been very good at scoring. Chiro scored one because you weren't in the game. <laughs> And then, uh, and then Daniel on the other end has, has had that huge save, which did preserve that 0-0 tie. Yeah, no, and it's interesting from a field player and a keeper's perspective. We've talked a lot with Daniel. We're super close, but talking about pens, being like, what are you thinking as I'm taking one? It's a lot of body language, what you're showing in your hips, and it's a big, like, mental thing. You'll get, you'll get chatted at as you walk to the pen spot from the other team, and you'll have to try and keep your cool. They'll yell which direction you're going. You'll have to figure it out in your head, but... Yeah, I had no doubt that he was stopping that one. He's, Sessler had a heck of a week with 25 saves in two games. It's, it was a great week from him, and no doubt he was going to save that. Do you ever do you ever change your mind? I mean, obviously, you like you said, you have in your head what you're going to do. When you start hearing some of that chirping and, and looking at the kids, do you, change, do you ever change where it you think It can change. Uh, statistically, you're best suited to make the decision the night before so okay. that you're in a calm mm -hmm. spot when you go to take it. But... For me, I work best just taking a deep breath, lowering my heart rate before I take it, and keeper might be more to one side, more to the right, more to the left, and you kind of just 
have to make that decision in your head when you go to kick it and you got to be confident and go which way. I think there's a lot of things in life you're better off making the decision <laughs> yeah, yeah. the night before. <laughs> yeah. Jack, um, let's talk a little bit about the season. We had kind of talked a little bit uh, in, in the early segment about just overcoming adversity. You guys have had, you guys have had your share of adversity, especially uh, when it comes to conference play. Just talk a little bit about the season and how you guys are are, are regrouping and heading into uh, heading into Saturday with a, a huge game against Augsburg, a team that just beat Eau Claire uh, last night. Yeah, um, I think we've responded really well. Uh, our schedule is set up that we face a lot of tough teams really early, especially in the Mayak. We already played Gustavus, which is ranked seventh in the nation. Um, but like we held our own that half. It was nil-nil at the end of the first, and I think this year, rather than last year, we've done a very good job at controlling the controllables. We're able to come in, um, keep energy throughout the game, and it's just we just got to fix those lapses of judgment. It's those two minutes when uh, Gustavus put two in in mm -hmm. that second half within a four minute um, four minute time period. Like you just got to stay focused and can't drop the intensity because good teams will punish you in the mic. Yeah, I mean, as I look at your schedule and look at sort of the results of the games, um, other than the one outlier against St. John's, you're in all of the games. Everything's low scoring. Um, it's just a matter of maybe getting a bounce here or there, right? Yeah, which is it's frustrating as well as encouraging um, because you look back, you watch that film, you're like, if we make this pass, it's we win that game. Mm -hmm. um, but no, we know we're in a good spot. There's 18 points up for grabs and excited for Augsburg on Saturday. You know, it's interesting that you that you mentioned that you know that one that one player that one one minute span. Soccer is such that that's all it takes. Mm -hmm. You know, unlike uh, you, you look at a sport like hockey where you get several opportunities in a in a period to score goals, mm -hmm. but in soccer you may only get one or two chances, and you really do kind of have to make make the most of that. Yeah, no, it's it can change a game, especially late first half goals, early second half goals can quickly change a game. Jack, now that you're a junior, one of the team leaders, um, how do you look at that role? What kind of advice do you give uh, some of the younger players? I've got four of your um, uh, teammates in my freshman anchor class. Uh, so what do you say to guys like John and who, ma'am, and Roly and Aldo? Just try and find how I can help the team best. Uh, a lot of times it's, sometimes it's getting on, yelling at those guys, and sometimes mm -hmm. it's like, just trying to be a little quiet of a leader. Um, you got to find that good mix. Uh, I found that early on is like if you come on too harsh, it, a lot of times it doesn't get across to those guys. But just say let them let them live and let them learn. Um, whom I am is one of those guys whom has stepped up as a leader as a freshman already and is just like helping out us as leaders. And um, it's really big to have other guys step up too. Mm -hmm. You know what is what is the biggest adjustment coming from high school club? To, to the college level. Is there something that's that's the hardest to adjust to going from one to the other? Speed of play and physicality are the two that I've learned. Um, yeah, if you're not hitting the weight room before, you'll feel it, especially in the MIAC, as physical as it is in every single sport in that division. Um, and then speed of play, it's way quicker. In high school, you're the best player on your team if you're playing college soccer and you're able to take four or five touches where you have to play one to two touch here in college. So. Yeah, speed of play and physicality yeah. are very different. Well, we have time for about one more question, Donnie. Okay. So you want to get well, to your you Corbin question? You mentioned. Right? Well, I don't. I, are you going to? Do you have any good Corbin stories? <laughs> I don't know. Corbin's <laughs> Corbin's a real competitive coach. All I got to say is sometimes when he's scrimmaging with us, his his team tends to get the longer game somehow. I don't know how it happens, but they tend to be on the field a minute or two longer than everyone else. Yeah. Okay. Aside from Daniel, because you did say you're very close to, to Daniel. If you were trapped on a desert island with one teammate, who would it be and why? Wow. Yeah, I'll leave Daniel out of that one. I think we get in a fight anyway. It's too close to that. Um, I think I'd bring Jacob Wing with me. He's kind of the dad of the group, so I feel like he'd be real reliable. He'd find us a way to get out of that island. Um, he's got some good music taste, so I think I'd, I think I'd have a fun <laughs> time with Jake Wing. Yeah. Excellent. Do well, we one, one more. Do we have time? Yeah, for yeah we have time for one more. Um, senior day is the twenty second. If you had a thirty seconds here, if you want to give a message to your seniors, what would you tell them? Tell them thank you. Uh, you guys have helped a lot. Team culture this year. Um, you guys have stepped up this year, especially Garrett Jackson, two sport athlete. He's been really focused soccer wise this year and has really stepped up. Keeler has stepped into that starting position as well, which has been huge at the six. Super reliable. 
uh, Liam Clemens, Connor, you know your impact on this team, and I would just say thank you, and let's grind it out for the rest of the year with you guys. Jack, thank you for being on the show, and I'm also appreciative you gave mom and dad a shout out earlier, <laughs> so to. that was great, that was great, but hey, you're having a great season, good luck here the rest of the year. Appreciate it, Thanks, thank Jack. you guys for having me. All right, that's going to do it for this Cardinals Nest. Thank you so much for watching, tune in again next time for another Cardinals Nest.